Hi. Now, can you recall that if you have an equation of the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants, that if you plot y against x, you get a straight line graph. And the constant c is the y-intercept, because when x is naught, y equals that constant value c. And m is the gradient. You take any two points on the line, work out the difference in y over the difference in x, divide it, and you get the gradient m. Now what I want to show you in this tutorial is how we can use this concept to work out constants in other relationships. For instance, suppose you had some results, x and y. Now I'm not going to give the numbers here, because it's going to slow us down. All I want to do is give you an overview of what you do. So if you had a table of results for x and corresponding table of results for y, and you were to plot the graph of y against x, and let's suppose that you found that your points look something like this. Not a straight line, but some curve passing, say, through the origin, and you join them up, you got your curve. Now the question is, you might be thinking, what is the relationship between y and x? Is it something like y equals 2x squared? Or is it y equals 3x to the power 4? Something like this is most probably going to have something of the form y equals a constant, let's call it a, x to another constant power, y equals ax to the power k. And we want to work out what these values a and k are. So how do we do it? Simple. All we do is we take our equation, y equals ax to the power k, and we take logs to both sides. And it doesn't matter whether you do logs to base 10 or logs to base e or any other base. Now I'm going to take logs to base e, natural logs in other words. And we would therefore have the natural log of y equals the natural log of the other side here, ax to the power k. Now we can use a rule for logs because we've got a times x to the power k. It's not ax all to the power k, but just a times x to the power k. And from one of the rules of logs, which you should know, this can be broken down to the log of a, the natural log of a, plus the natural log of x to the power k. And when we've got something like this, a power, we can bring the power out to the front. And so we get the natural log of y equals k times the natural log of x. And I'm going to write this on purpose as the first term here. And then we've got this term plus the natural log of a. Now, x and y vary. So if x and y vary, so will the natural log of x and the natural log of y. But a and k were constants, so the natural log of a will be a constant, and k remains a constant. What we've got is a variable quantity, which we could say is y, equals another constant, which we call m, a variable quantity, x, plus a constant. We have something of the form y equals mx plus c. So if this rule were true, we would expect to get a straight line graph if we were to plot for y the natural log of y. Let's just put the axis up. The natural log of y against the natural log of x. Can you see our y is the natural log of y and the x is the natural log of x? But before we can plot this graph, we need to get some values. We need to get the natural log of y and the natural log of x. So what you're going to need to do is to extend this table up here 
and you're going to need to work out the natural log of x and the natural log of y. So to do that, all we need to do is take, say, whatever this value is here and do the natural log of it and we'll get another value. And we'll take this y value and do the natural log of y. And we'll repeat this for each of these numbers and we'll get a series of coordinates that we could plot. Now if we were to plot those points we'd find hopefully we'd get a straight line. If we didn't we would know that this was not the relationship. So if we plot those points and get a straight line graph something like that then we look at this point here where the graph intercepts the natural log of y essentially the big y axis if you like and let's just suppose that we read that value off as 0.8 say well we know that this is the c the y intercept and c for us in this example is the natural log of a so therefore we'd have the natural log of a equals 0.8 and this is easy to work out a now because we can say that a must equal e to the power 0.8 and if you do this on your calculator you find that you get 2.2 to one decimal place. So that's how you can work out your constant a. Now what about k? Well k corresponds with m, the gradient, the gradient of this line and to work out the gradient all you need to do is find two points on the line, let's say you had that point and maybe that point there, draw a triangle, work out this distance and work out that distance, this will be the change in y, this will be the change in x, divide the two quantities and get a value. Now let's suppose that that value turned out to be 1.2. The gradient m equals 1.2. That means our constant k was 1.2. So we've got k equals 1.2. So that leads us to what this relationship was. It would be that y equals a being 2.2 times x to the power 1.2. Now I've used this concept for equations of this form but there are other forms you can have and here's another one. Suppose this time you had your table of values and when you plotted them you had a series of points that looked something like this. So in this example you might think this was say an exponential type graph something of the form y equals 2 times 3 to the power x, y equals 5 times 2 to the power x or whatever. In other words something of the form y equals a times b to the power x where a and b are constants to be found. So how do we do something like this? Well again we'll just start with the equation y equals a times b to the power x and we take logs to both sides. So we could take natural logs so therefore we're going to have the natural log of y equals the natural log of a times b to the power x. So with this what we could do by the law of logs this becomes the natural log of a plus the natural log of b to the power x and with this we can put x to the front here and get natural log of y equals the natural log of a plus x times the natural log of b. If we think of this in the form y equals mx plus c. I'll just write this down here but this time I haven't rearranged this but it's still got this format. Can you see 
that the y is the natural log of y. This varies. a is a constant, so natural log of a is a constant, so that's going to correspond to the c. The x is the x here. Okay, let's just say that big X is little x, but the gradient m in this example is the natural log of b. So when it comes to plotting our graph, okay, what we're doing is plotting natural log of y on this axis against x on this axis. But before we can plot our points, we need to extend this table. But in this example, all we need is one more row. That row would be the natural log of y. We take our y values and work out what the natural log of y is for each one of them. Take that one, get its value, and so on. So, when it comes to plotting our coordinates here, we just need to plot this row, the x row, against natural log of y. And if we do that, we get our line. We know then that it must follow this particular relationship. We look to find out what the y-intercept is. Well, it won't be the y-intercept in this case. It's the natural log of y-intercept. And let's suppose that we saw that this was 1.2. We've got that the y-intercept, c, corresponds to natural log of a, as it did before. So we've got that natural log of a equals 1.2, and to get a, a would equal e to the power 1.2. And if you work that one out, you end up with 3.3 to one decimal place. As for b, we know that natural log of b is the gradient. So we take our two points, draw a triangle, work out what the gradient is by doing this divided by this. Suppose we find that the gradient m turns out to be, let's say, 0.5. Then we've got the natural log of b equals 0.5. And similarly, just like this, it follows that b equals e to the power 0.5. And if you do that, you get 1.6. So we end up with 1.6 to one decimal place. So that means that the relationship is y equals a times b to the power x. a being 3.3 multiplied by 1.6 to the power x. Don't make the mistake of doing 3.3 times 1.6 though, okay? Just leave it like that. Okay, well, I hope that's given you some idea. These are some of the common ones that you're likely to face, but hopefully you can apply this rule in many other cases.